you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks to both of you for being here today and being uh, cognizant of our little schedules going to vote and coming back. We appreciate it. This question is, the uh, first question is for you, Dr. May. Bioscience is of particular interest to me because Florida International University, which is in my district, is partnering with public and private universities, state colleges, and economic development councils to leverage existing regional science, life science assets in that area of uh, Miami-Dade County. In your testimony, you mentioned how NIST is ideally positioned to work with industry and federal regulatory agencies to develop innovation solutions to biological measurement challenges. NIST has developed a strategic plan for its bioscience activities. Mm -hmm. Could you please give us an update on that strategic plan and a review of bioscience-related research activities being conducted at NIST currently? Okay, I'll give you a very, very high-level overview because I, to be honest with you, since I've moved to my current job, I'm not as aware of the, what's going on every day in the material measurement laboratory where most of I, uh, bioscience related research is going. But back to the strategic plan, I'll be happy to send you a copy. The plan that we have, we conducted uh, a outreach activity a few years back where we looked at globally the measurement and standards barriers to innovation in the biosciences. So we looked at this, what are the issues, period. And then from that, we selected a number of areas that NIST would begin to focus on immediately. One of those was providing the measurement underpinning to improve the uh, uh, development and regulatory approval of biologic drugs. Uh, and the focus, but if you look at the th main pillars of our bioscience program, it's in the area of uh, providing better measurements and standards to support uh, diagnostic, uh, medical diagnostics. The main emphasis now is in genetic diseases. It is to improve the quality of medical imaging because oftentimes when you have a medical, when you have an image, you go to one doctor, then you go to another to get a second opinion. And when you really think about it, the truth in that image hasn't changed. It's just an to interpretation. So we're trying to put more science in medical imaging so that the devices from different manufacturers essentially yield the same truth. And then the other area is working to promote, uh, as I said earlier, the more effect efficient development and regulatory approval with the FDA of uh, biosimilars of biologic drugs. So those are the three focus areas for our program in bio. Protus, should the, since the bioscience related research activities at NIST are not housed in one laboratory, do you think a review of the bioscience programs by a group like the National Academies is needed? Well, I think it would definitely be beneficial. As I had mentioned in my remarks, the cross-cutting programs are always a challenge in any organization, including NIST. And since the biosciences have been ramping up rapidly over the last few years, are a vital contribution that NIST is making. And because, as you point out, they are cross-disciplinary across the NIST laboratories, it would seem to me, speaking as an individual, that that would be an ideal area for a cross-cutting review. The NRC has done several cross-cutting reviews, the manufacturing initiative, and before that, some others. So it certainly uh, is prepared to do those. And uh, if asked, I'm sure the National Academies would be happy to put together an appropriate panel to do that. I don't know if I have time, but uh, in your testimony, you recommended that the committee should reauthorize NIST as the fullest funding level possible. If that is not possible, could you please discuss the trade-offs that NIST would have to make? Well, the one thing I have noticed that's consistent through the history of the reviews, I've been involved for well over a decade, is that there is not what we would call fat. There is not excess there. Uh, we have looked at the quality and are very impressed with it, we think that if there is decrease in the money available, that NIST should, 
and again, I'm speaking as an individual here, should look at what they would have to cut out, which is really a subject matter for VCAT that looks at what NIST is doing, but that they should cut out some things rather than try and cross the board to continue doing all they're doing, because the quality is very high, but there's no excess of capabilities in there for what they're doing. So uh, not being a member of VCAT or of NIST, I can't say what they should look at eliminating or what it would be, but I can say that our reports have consistently shown there is just not extra there that could be cut and have them still continue to do the same breadth of programs. Uh, this, this question is for uh, Mr. Carotis. <clears throat> we all know that uh, VCAT uh, probably should come and give us some input before we go for the reauthorization of NIST. So perhaps at another hearing, uh, we can get our chairman to make sure that they're here. In the meantime, I need to find out uh, how you can help. In your testimony, you mentioned how the Visiting Committee on Advanced Technology, which is VCAT, focus on NIST research portfolio and the National Research Council focuses on how NIST is conducting those research activities. One of your recommendations was that there needs to be more formal and regular interaction between the two groups. Please elaborate on this recommendation and discuss the current relationship and tell us what you think the future relationship should include. Well, thank you very much. Uh, because the National Academies voluntarily, I mean the NIST voluntarily uh, contracts with the National Research Council to do the assessment, uh, it reports to the NIST uh, administration. It was true that some years ago, the heads of the National Academy Review and the VCAT would meet together and even do briefings together. Um, but somewhere along the way, that had passed uh, off. And so right now, the National Academies give all the reports to the ad administration of NIST. Uh, and of course, this is NIST's option since they contract with the National Academies. as. Uh, I remember very vividly on September uh, 11th of 2001, I was briefing VCAT on behalf of the NIST academies, even though I was not chair of the committee at that time. Um, so I remember that day very specially. Um, my personal feeling is that after reading the assessment of assessment study that was done by the academies, that since those three aspects I mentioned of management, quality, and relevance, are so important that it's very hard to separate them into the two categories of is this doing the right things and is this doing things right. And so it seems to me that, uh, again, speaking only as an individual chair of this committee, that um, for VCAT to hear the results of the NRC studies and share them directly along with this management might be part of an overall plan that could be useful for NIST in the long run. NIST asked the National Academies to review the assessment process of research and development organizations. That review led to the report entitled Best Practices in Assessment, Research, and Development Organizations, which you discuss in your testimony. You mention how it is important to assess the management, quality of scientific and technical work, and the impacts and relevancy of that work when assessing a research and development organization. How NIST is being reviewed on these three items currently. Could you please discuss how it's being reviewed? Yes, thank you. Uh, clearly, the, the National Academies address the quality of scientific and technical work. And that's the number one thing we look at in all the programs at NIST that are under assessment in any particular year. NIST has also always asked the National Academies, I say always the past dozen years or so in which I've been involved, to look at the impact of what's done and the relevance. So those two areas 
uh, have been studied by the National Academies, starting with the quality. Uh, we have clearly stayed out of management and strategic planning issues, feeling that that came under the purview of VCAT. So we have not offered advice, uh, although once in a while we slip in a advice anyway, even though we haven't been asked, but we have really stayed out of the management and strategic planning side, um, although it's hard to keep senior people down. Uh, but we really haven't focused on that part. And I think that the uh, best practices study was an excellent one. I did not lead it, although I was a member. And uh, actually a former NIST director was the leader of it, who had other government roles and private industry roles. And I think that um, it says the right thing. You have to start at the management, and that was listed first. And then you have to look at the quality of what's being done, and then you have to look at the relevance of it. And I think that VCAT comes in at the management and also the relevance and impact in guiding what programs to do. Thank you.